Hi everybody. Welcome to Simple Living PEI. So it's a rainy day on the island today, so we're getting nothing done outside. But I decided to make cookies. I probably shouldn't have made cookies. Check this out. So this is what happens when you put too much butter <laughs> in the cookies. Yeah, well, who cares? They smell good. They'll taste good. Maybe tomorrow will be a little more productive. Well, sky like this, and yeah, there's some thunder happening. Kind of like that one. I guess we're not going to get any work done outside this afternoon. It's still rolling. I'm not sure if you could hear, hear that. You would not know it's the middle of the afternoon. It's so dark when there's no lights on. Wow. It stopped raining. <laughs> I went and harvested some rhubarb. Let's make some barbecue sauce. Now, I think I've gone through uh, maybe four batches of rhubarb and now, of course, there's more spiders and everything, so you really have to make sure you clean the rhubarb. So, I cut a lot of rhubarb today for this, and we've actually gone through two batches of rhubarb jam so far as well. So, rhubarb is tasty, and when you've got a batch of, as big as we have, you wash it, you use it, and I still don't have any put in the freezer yet. But, yeah, my little cutting board idea. That failed. Thank goodness I have sharp knives. Samurai action. <laughs> it actually worked pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. And lots of great compost for the Hugo culture. Now the recipe that we're using takes 16 cups of chopped rhubarb. Now that big huge measuring cup I have there, it actually is an eight cup measure, so it works out great. So 16 cups, yeah, and I did forget to put the damp tea towel underneath my cutting board. It's amazing how well that works. But 16 cups, because it is a double batch, that is a lot of chopping, just so you know. I also do have the big pot actually over there on the stove, and once that was filled both times, I just went in there and dumped it into the pot. Now, I actually did have rhubarb left over, so... So far, I've made some rhubarb muffins for Freddy for work, and I actually had rhubarb pancakes. I actually forgot how good it was to put fresh chopped rhubarb in your pancakes. Just saying. If you've got a rhubarb patch, seriously, get in there, take a couple of pieces out, and just chop it away. <laughs> that was just me saying eight cups down, eight cups to go, but kind of forgot I was talking in this part. So, almost got the full 16 cups. I did have to go buy more raisins too because I actually didn't have enough raisins for this recipe. So we have the raisins, we have the rhubarb, in a little while we'll have the rest of the ingredients as well. Yeah, I wonder how much more rhubarb I can actually get in the freezer from this batch. That's a tough one. Hmm. Now I did let some bolt already, so I've got about four rhubarb out there that I have let go to seed. And those are the ones I'll pull some of the young little ones off. And you can actually pull rhubarb all summer. Don't cut it, pull it. When you pull it, it actually does give you a lot more rhubarb for the rest of the season. So, 
But there we go. 16 cups of rhubarb down. Wow, that was a lot of cutting. Now it's on to the raisins. Now I admit I do use the President's Choice and the No Name Raisins when I do anything with raisins. When you read the packaging, there is a little bit of sunflower oil on the raisins themselves just to help with sticking, but there's nothing else. So some of the packages of raisins that you can get out there do have added ingredients, like added sugars and things. The President's Choice and the No Name Raisins, they have nothing. They are very, very clean product. Now, if you're an organic type of person, get organic raisins. They're just the same. No name raisins, they taste great. They may not look as pretty, but who cares? Just because it doesn't look pretty doesn't mean it doesn't taste good, right? And if you ever chopped raisins, those things are sticky. <laughs> so there's our rhubarb, there's our raisins. That is actually a large pasta pot that I have. Now in the recipe, it's a half a cup of chopped onions. In our case, it'll be a full cup of chopped onions. And of course, if I was thinking, I would have started with the bigger of the two because I ended up with a half an onion left over. But we put it in lunch. Didn't go to waste. Waste not, want not. The onion skins, though, Freddie put in the compost before I had the chance to actually put them in our stock bag. So we've got the onions, we've got the raisins, we've got the rhubarb, and now it's the brown sugar. It equaled out to be seven cups of brown sugar. I had no idea, to be honest. I didn't even think that it would be that much brown sugar. So one cup of vinegar, and then we'll add the spices. We have ginger, allspice, and salt, and nutmeg. And of course, I put the one teaspoon in for each, and then went back and had to put it back in again because, hey, <laughs> it's a double batch. So my question is, a professional cook, do you get blisters? Like seriously, all I did was cut up 16 cups of rhubarb and I got a blister. That's ridiculous. Well guys, that's all the ingredients. Now I had to go back, you see my messy kitchen, we're reorganizing, so I'm gonna tilt. Anyway, the forgot we were doing a double batch so I actually had to go back in and add that second teaspoon of spices for everything. Now this has got to cook for about an hour. Now if you do want a single batch it only needs to go for about a half an hour but there is 16 cups of chopped rhubarb, three cups of chopped raisins and then all the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna let this cook and uh, get some jars prepped. Barbecue sauce is on the way. Now the recipe does not say to blend it, but since I didn't cut the rhubarb as small as they actually say in the Bernardin book, I did decide to take the hand blender to it and it worked out well. Now the barbecue sauce almost has a chutney type flavor, but it still has some of those notes of barbecue sauce. I'm gonna bet this stuff would be fabulous with that tangy flavor if I had a tossed a few chili peppers in there. To be honest, I am seriously thinking next time we make this, I might have to spice it up a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit. You know, just a few chilies. I have lots of chilies from the garden from last year. I think it would taste pretty good. I actually can't wait to actually mix this in or put it on, cho um, put it on chicken or into a meatloaf. Oh, it tasted phenomenal. Well, it has been a really busy day. Now I brought you with me when I was prepping all the ingredients for our Victorian bar barbecue sauce, but note to self, plug in the camera <laughs> before you actually go to video anything else. But anyway, guys, check it out. That is the finished product. Now, like I said, that is one of the safe canning recipes from my Bernardin book. And I did double the recipe, so it was a full 16 cups of chopped rhubarb and three cups of chopped raisins and then the onions the vinegar the spices and the brown sugar now that's a lot of brown sugar but it's amazingly tangy now if you've never had victorian barbecue sauce it's kind of like a chutney it is really really quite good it's actually not so sunny now so you can probably see that a little better see? Ta -da! but this one is still hot so I ended up with 14 
little half pints, so 250 ml jars, which for us is the perfect size. Now the recipe says to use pints, so 500 ml, but you can also go lower. You can do smaller jars. The processing is still the same. I have a steam canner, so when I do a steam can, I tend to leave them in the canner a little longer than you would with a water bath canner because I have heard people say they've had a lot of failure with a steam canner. For me, I love my steam canner. I am so happy I got it. Now I don't have an induction stove. I have a glass top, but it's not induction. So that's a key thing to remember that a lot of canners do not work on induction stoves. Okay. But that was our first canning adventure for the year, other than some jam that I made for my mother. Now we were going to go ahead together and make some long cook rhubarb jam, but nowhere on the National Center for uh, Home Preservation, Bernardin or Ball, could I actually find a safe rhubarb, no pectin long cook jam recipe. Rhubarb is actually really low in pectin. So normally when you're making anything with rhubarb, there's actually added sugar and added, added acids like, um, like vinegar, like in the chutney or a fair amount of lemon juice. Now, when I did the math, I'd have a whole whack of lemon juice if I did some no cook rhubarb jam. So, sorry, no cook, no pectin, long cook. So no long cook jam for my sister. Now, if you're curious, the National Center for Home Preservation, it's a US site. What they do is they actually go through a lot of safe canning methods based on new equipment. So when the jars change, the lids change, they actually test a lot of the recipes and a lot of the ratios again, just to make sure it's safe. Ball and Bernardin, these guys are the same. So if you have a Ball book, a Bernardin book, anytime in the last, say, they say about up to the last 10 years, any of those books, you can easily do any of those recipes for canning, for water bath canning or for pressure canning and they're safe. So the way I look at it is if I can make a safe recipe that I can really, really like, why not? But there is one that we're going to be making again, as soon as I can get some, which is strawberry lemonade concentrate. So I have a soda stream. This stuff is fabulous in a soda stream. Mind you, the last time I made it, I didn't strain the strawberries. Note to self, strain the strawberries. Well guys, I uh, I don't know what else to say. That was our first real canning adventure. I did my first little tiny harvest. Ta-da! So I needed to thin the raspberries in our little kitchen garden, or raspberries. Oh my gosh, I got berries on the brain. I had to thin the little radishes a bit so some of the other ones get a little bit bigger. But I have six little tiny radishes now for my dinner. Kind of looking forward to it. I technically, I suppose this is the first harvest. We did pull a couple out the other day just to see how big they were. So, now I am not someone who likes uh, radish greens. Now, if you like radish greens, keep these things. Um, I've heard people have made pesto with radish greens and things like that. And apparently it tastes really good. I personally just don't like radish greens, so they will go into the compost pile until I have chickens. They will build the hugo culture. So I'll go around, we'll do a tour of the garden soon, and you can see how that hugo culture has grown. Probably take a couple of years, but in a couple of years we're going to pop a couple pumpkins up there and we'll see if it grows. Anyway, that's all for now. So go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, go ahead and share it if you'd like. Come along with us as we uh, do our simpler life on PEI. Bye for now, guys. Talk soon.